uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, bees, earthlings, hope you are where, if you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel on Bushka. It's a Christmas miracle, all right? I'm back making tank videos, and make sure you watch them. Enjoy yourself. This is the Astron Rex. Now, I feel particularly inclined to do a review on this tank. I've got this tank on the PC version, I've played a fair few games in it, and it's quite different there. There's a lot more in the clips, uh, and the gameplay meta is very, very different. Blitz is a lot more punch in your face, rather than slowly tickle you to death with a feather from a thousand meters. But the Rex is an interesting tank for me in Blitz. Uh, if you look at the stats on this tank, they're not particularly inspiring. There are a lot of other clippers in Blitz, or auto reloaders even, who fall in the kind of category that the Astron Rex is fighting for airspace in. Tanks like the Progetto, the Pantera, and then auto loaders like uh, the Lorraine and the T-69. And in fact, the Astron Rex doesn't really particularly excite anything uh, in terms of big numbers on, on those tanks. It's not a tank that has crazy DPM. It's under 2,000 uh, DPM a minute, damage per minute. Um, and it's not a tank that has insane amounts of mobility. In fact, the mobility is mediocre uh, against his compatriots. It's got decent top speed of 52, which isn't crazy for a medium, not like the 60 of the Pantera or the Lorraine 40T. Um, and its power to weight ratio is right down as well at about 16 and a half versus the 20 plus for those tanks. I mean, the T69 is in the same kind of ballpark. The T69 is a, um, a much higher DPM tank. It gets about 500 more DPM. What the Rex has going for it is quite odd. It's got a strong-ish turret. It's not a crazy strong turret, but it's a very low profile tank. It's not, it looks chunky, but it's not actually an incredibly tall tank. And you couple that with a relatively low turret and eight degrees of gun depression, which again is not huge. It's gun depression is eight degrees is right. Like there's so many tier eight mediums with eight to 10 degrees of gun depression. I mean, this is the, poster child of the tier, the the 2K, 2.1K DPM, 8 to 9 degrees of gun depression, the Indians, the Centurions, the Panthers, you get it, like it's it's a, a pretty standard kind of fare, but you couple that with a, a slightly larger alpha, the alpha on this tank is 300 and, oh, well, it's, it's just on 300, 290, and you get a tank that can peak and boom more reliably, you can bounce more shots. It's certainly not going to, you know, set the world on fire with red-hot bursts of DPM, but it is going to give you reliable alpha shots around about that 300 mark, which is high for this tier. Like, that is high. The The generic thing is like a, a tank that has 8 to 9 degrees of DPM, 2100, uh, 8 to 9 degrees of gun depression, 2100 DPM, and a whole lot of um, pew-pew. Pew, 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 right? And that's not the case with the Rex. The Rex is more about delivering uh, a larger dose of love in longer periods. And in fact, my first two drives in it were a mastery and a first class. And it played exactly as I expected it to play, which was nice. It's nice to be right about some things some of the time and most of the things none of the time. There we go. That was our first game. If you look at the armor profile too, we'll have a look at that in just a second. It does tell somewhat of a story on the Rex. It's all turret and no body. The Rex completely skipped leg day and opted instead to go for a whole bunch of head workouts. And that's good because what the Rex has is a whole bunch of head. <laughs> it's all chassis. The chassis is incredibly light. The upper glacis is very, very steep. And you can see any time you're getting penned low, you're getting penned easy. So hiding that by making it a very low profile tank is important. And if you can get the gun depression to work at all, like you saw there, with eight degrees of gun depression, you can turn it into something very, very special. What I'm doing here is something that the Rex can do a little more effectively than its compatriots because it has such a high dose of alpha. 900 in a clip, well 290 times 3 gives you an 870, means that you can actually push a little bit in the Rex, which is very, very important. It's weird though that you look at a Lorraine 40T 
And it has 225 alpha, but it has four shells, so it gets a thousand, and then has a 20.42 second reload. The Rex is awfully punished with a 21.35 second reload for only three shells of 290 alpha. The T69, which has the same alpha as the Lorraine 40T at 225, has a 12.4 second intraclip reload, which is why the T69 has always been, in my mind, a tremendously underrated tier eight medium. And look at how long I have to wait on this thing. It's like very hard in this tank to actually take ground. It's great for helping out a platoon mate. If you run this thing with say a Progetto, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff, but it's very, very difficult with the Rex to take ground. I was only able to push that Skoda because I had help and he was close to a thousand hit points. And you know, that's the the pure joy of this tank, is if you can get it out there in a low profile position and hide that upper glacis, then you can do some really, really nice things. Let's have a look at my second game here. So I had a mastery and then I had this game, and I thought this would be a mastery as well, but it didn't turn out to be so. Um, there's someone saying hello. It's, it's interesting. I thought this account was incognito, and I've only been back like a week, and... It's like, yeah, it's not so incognito, to be fair. It's uh, it's awfully common. People are saying hello to me on this thing all the time. So, bearing in mind that we just want to expose our massive head, and we want to keep our very, very weak and low-profile lower chassis hidden, this is the kind of thing you want to be doing. I love how Wargaming have balanced these kind of tanks. Um... Because this is not an overpowered tank, I don't think. There's plenty of other tanks at the same tier that have various things going for them. Um, a lot like the Rex. And the fact that the Rex is able to get away with it, um, having lowish DPM, nothing spectacular, that's for sure. 1851 is not real right home DPM. And very poor lower glacis armor. And only three in the clip for a tank with a 20, uh, 21.35 second reload. It's just a testament to the gods of balance. I mean, its rate of fire is not special. Its terrain resistance is not special. Its power to weight ratio is not special. Literally, the only thing it's got going for it is a strong turret profile. And you can see uh, the Amigo that said hello to me, Faith, over there, <laughs> is snuck up the side and is giving me no end of trouble and grief, but has taken a lot of damage to get the job done there. And we start pushing around and to the left. All my shots are basically taking advantage of this. I would love to have a little bit more zing on this tank. Just a little bit more movement. And I stopped to say something here in the chat and get myself shot from the side. Like, I just... Eh, the gun's fine too. It's not amazing. Uh, it's not an amazing gun at all. Um, 0.328 dispersion is not something to write home about. You got a Progetto 0.31, Pantera's 0.31, the Lorraine's 0.31, the T69 is 0.319. So again, you're on the outer. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, it's it's a lovely little bundle of tools that gives you the opportunity to do good things. And I'm a big fan of that kind of tank. It reminds me too. It sounds a little bit like the same engine as the M48A1 pattern. Um, when I'm when it's taking off, it sounds just a little bit like that. I think it's in a really good place, and I think it's a fun tank to drive. And if you like peek a boom play style, um, a clipper with 290 on it is actually look. Oh, we get very lucky that his track gets taken out there. Otherwise, nothing good was going to come of that. We were going to miss that last shell and have to face either a very long reload or exposing ourselves to dump one in the uh, EXP. I'm not interested in fighting the EXP right now on the full reload. I'd rather just go and help the rest of the team. Leave him there. So we back that up. Get the big turret turning. The mantlet's an interesting one too. You can see how steeply angled the mantlet is. Uh, it does make for a gun, a gun package that bounces a lot of shells. I mean, it's not... You don't want to expose this turret for a long, long period of time. But you can certainly get away with holding and hard peeking against certain tanks and I mean the poor old T43 the the old queen of DPM and tier 7 tier 7 was always about DPM tier 8 was always about 
the gimmick. And uh, you can see here we've managed to whack out. I think we end up with about 4k damage or just close enough to it. And that's, that's all about that alpha. That alpha peak and boom. Get used to it. Run it. Particularly in platoon. I think as a solo tank, this tank is very, very dependent on help. Because you can't... I mean, 20 plus second reloads. That's an awful lot of time in water tank splits. You've got to be sure of your team to be able to do that or put yourself in the right position to do it. So play positionally, move it around the map, and just farm the damage. Not not for taking and holding, all about for the farming. Only a first class. Disappointing, 3,900. Uh, I'm Bushka. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow me along on all the socials at Bushka and Blitz on Twitter, at the Bushka on TikTok and yeah, Instagram. Until next time, bye for now.